17 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, the U.S. Embassy has established a U.S. aid satellite office at the U.S. Embassy in Port of Spain. And with me to talk more about this is Charge de Fair, Mr. Shanti Moore, and of course, U.S. aid and the ESC representative for Eastern and Southern Caribbean, Mr. Clinton White. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Now, Mr. White, I'll start with you first, because for, for those of us who don't know, what exactly is the U.S. aid? Yes, thank you for that question. <laughs> USAID is the United States Agency for International Development. And just like the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, we are celebrating our 60th year oh, anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you, <laughs> and congratulations to you all as thank well. Thank you. Yes, and so as part of the United States government, we are the development arm of, of the United States. And so we provide foreign assistance in countries around the world um, to provide economic recovery, promote democracy and governance, working on areas like climate change and working to trafficking in persons. But again, you know, we are global in terms of the U.S. government and the work that we do really is what we achieve to bring more prosperity and human dignity and helping everyone that we can, especially, you know, the young people um, and all of those that benefit from our foreign assistance. Of course. And why was it relevant to start this USAID office in TNT now? What was the purpose of it? Well, we've been working in uh, Trinidad and Tobago for a number of years. You know, our office is, our main office is based in Barbados, and we also have another office in Guyana. But really, you know, for us to be able to be a f more effective um, and to work with Trinidad and Tobago and the people of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, we felt working with the U.S. Embassy here um, and with the Charge Moore that uh, it would be uh, an imperative um, uh, meaning for us to actually open up an office so that we can work more closely with our government counterparts, work more closely with the citizens and, and civil society organizations here. But also, as we have a number of programs and activities throughout the region, you know, focusing and doing more programs and activities as partners um, here, you know, we felt opening the office would make a lot more sense okay. going forward. Yeah. And I'm going to come to you now, uh, Mr. Moore, because I'm, I'm just thinking, how is the opening of this office going to help with overall diplomatic relations? Good morning, and good, good morning. morning to your audience in Trinidad and Tobago. So it's going to help in two ways. First, it reaffirms the longstanding commitment and partnership that the United States has with the people in government of Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago is one of the, the leading countries in the Caribbean, not only from an economic standpoint, but also a leader with regards to democracy and, and human rights. And related to that, and my second point is that establishing the satellite office in Trinidad and Tobago helps the United States work with Trinidad and Tobago, which I previously mentioned is a leader within the Caribbean and in the international community to deal with the issues that all of our countries are dealing with. As Clinton mentioned, whether it's climate change, global, global health challenges, um, long-term sustainable and inclusive economic growth, citizen security, crime, and other areas that all of us need to work together to make sure that all of our citizens can, ha can lead productive, respectful, and decent lives. Of course. And then how is this, um, how is the U.S. aid uh, joining actually created in a larger context supposed to help us as well in terms of how is it going to help the, UN's, the uh, U.S. Embassy's presence in this country? In addition, so I'll say that's, that, that's also a twofold answer. Yeah. First. USAID will complement the work that we're already doing in Trinidad and Tobago in cooperation with the people in government of Trinidad and Tobago. For example, I mentioned citizen security. We have worked closely together on combating the COVID-19 pandemic. We're working closely together on ensuring that Trimbagonians, you know, have the opportunity to lead, you know, prosper dignified lives by strengthening, you know, the long the long-term sustainable inclusive economic growth of Trinidad and Tobago. In addition, you know, we, Trinidad, USAID will work with, with the youth and other civil society actors. And again, the goal is to make sure that we strengthen the relationship not only between the United States, but also among the Trinidadian people. We, we, we're here to help. And, and again, the second reason that, that it's important that we establish this office is again, the challenges that we're dealing with as a, as a, as a world or an international community USAID will not only complement but also lead. So some of the projects that USAID wants to implement in the area of food security, for example, is the farm-to-farmer -farmer program because we realize the importance 
of making sure that the Caribbean can feed itself. So we believe that farm to farmer program is important. A second area in which USCID will lead is the area of energy security. And USCID has a number of, of programs and projects which will help the energy security. For example, trying to strengthening, trying to strengthen the development of renewables, not only here in Trinidad and Tobago, but, th but throughout the Caribbean. So not only will USCID complement our current work in which we're implementing with the people in government Trinidad and Tobago, but it will also lead in other efforts, which we also believe are important to enhance not only our bilateral relationship, but also our regional and global relationship as we deal with the challenges that we're facing as an international community. Of course. Now, Mr. Wise, I'm coming back to you because I know that um, Mr. Moe would have just identified some of the projects that we've been working on and intend to work on, but yes. has the USAID office, has, have they, has it ever um, done any sorts of projects here in TNT before this uh, project that uh, Mr. Moore just mentioned? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we've been working in Trinidad and Tobago for a number of years yeah. um, as part of our regional programs and activities. One of them you may be familiar with is with the youth on the child court system. Mm -hmm. You know, we had helped develop those two uh, child court systems here with the UNDP, and so that's something that is continuing to be up and running. And if, when you go to that building, you'll see, you know, our USAID work has helped um, in moving in that area. We've also done a number of projects, as you heard, on climate change here in this particular region. Uh, we talked about, uh, Shante Moore, our CDA talked about our Farmer to Farmer program, which is a program that we're implementing with Purdue University and the University of West Indies uh, for St. Augustine. And that's actually helping a number of farmers to look at the way that they're implementing uh, farming techniques to better address the issues that come up with drought or come up with flooding or looking at how you can use more climate smart tools um, in ensuring that you can have a better yield in, in your uh, harvest. Uh, we've also done a lot on youth security um, and because we feel it's so important that with the youth today and the issues that they're being faced with, we have to continue to work with the youth because they are the future. And so we've done programs on juvenile justice reform to help those youth who may have encountered problems with the law and now, you know, deterring them uh, from getting into even more trouble, but also helping them to have more meaningful lives once they get out of uh, their situation. And we've also been doing programs related to economic recovery as well. And so we're looking forward to doing more of these type of programs and activities, especially also around trafficking in persons. Of course. Now bringing it to a local context, I hear you with the projects that you're doing, but for the average man on the street, how can this USAID satellite office at the U.S. Embassy assist the average TNT citizen? Well, I'm, I'm doing yes. it for you, Mr. White. I don't, I don't know if Mr. Moore would want to chime <laughs> in as well, but I'll, I'll put it to you first. No, and I thank you very much for that question. What we hope to achieve and what we've already seen is that the work that we do, the foreign assistance that we provide, the partnering that we're doing with not only the government but the citizens and people of Trinidad and Tobago, you have a direct impact and people that benefit from them. So, for example, somebody that's living in a neighborhood that might have issues with, with crime and violence, when you're able to help a youth re that may be gone through the system, you know, juvenile justice reform program, and get them back to live a more productive life. You're helping those communities. You're helping uh, the people here in Trinidad and Tobago. When you do programs with farmer to farmer type programs, where you're actually in the rural areas or in the communities and helping these farmers to find better ways to 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 lay their uh, to to plant their crops or look at other ways of yielding the type of crops that they have or thinking of other strategic ways or using climate smart techniques as I said to to have um, at their disposal uh, better ways to do their farming. This is how it also affects the people because those crops are then also used to help feed the communities mm -hmm. that are being used. Are also looking at ways of using you know those crops to help find markets, whether here in Trinidad and Tobago or the Caribbean or also even in the U.S. or other places. So this is how I feel that, you know, we're able to touch everybody because of the type of programs we have and because it does help on the community as well as on the national level. Of course. Mr. And Moore. Sure. Yes. And let me add, that is one of the reasons why, you know, we are excited and happy that USAID is here because USAID is the U.S. government's assistance agency, traditionally has worked directly with the people of those countries, whether it's, it's with communities, the private sector, civil society. And so now that USAID will be in Trinidad and Tobago, it can directly work with the different communities throughout Trinidad and Tobago because that's our goal. We want to make sure that 
any assistance, support, collaboration, and partnership that we have with the people in government in Trinidad and Tobago, at the end of the day, ultimately benefits you know, the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And that's what USAID is known for. That's, that is USAID's modus operandi, mm -hmm. if I can use that ter terminology. And so that's why, we're very, that's why it was important for USAID to establish the satellite office here, because we want to be able to, to engage and reach and respond directly to the needs, challenges, concerns of the Trimbagonian people, okay. obviously working with the people in government Trinidad and Tobago, the mm -hmm. private sector and civil society. Now let's take it outside because I know one of the things that you mentioned that you want to assist the Trinbagonian people with is that issue of crime and security. And so are there any agencies in the U.S. that the USAID office is going to partner with to ensure that we get some of the objectives that you mentioned uh, covered? Yes, uh, of course, because we are fortunate to have a considerable interagency, what we say U.S. interagency presence here in Trinidad and Tobago. So USAID will work directly with the Drug Enforcement Agency the, the FBI, our Customs and Border Protection agent who is here. We also have the presence of the Centers for, Centers for Disease Control, which is more health related. But again, it's, it's also addressing citizen security because if we're not health and safety as a people, then that, that affects our security. In addition, we have other interagency partners here that USAID will, 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 will work closely with in the area of citizen security and other areas. Mm -hmm. And as much as the focus is on the Trinbagonian people, is the USAID office also going to help our partners across the region? Yes, yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as I mentioned at the outset, that was one of the reasons we wanted USAID to return here, because Trinidad and Tobago is a leader in the region in, in many different ways. And we believe that whatever projects and initiatives that we implement successfully in Trinidad and Tobago, that we'll be able to implement and replicate throughout the region. Okay. Uh, Mr. White, I'm coming back to you. Just remind us when the USAID office, satellite office, was open, and what does the UNC plan to do, the, um, the agency or the embassy plan to do, just to commemorate that special opening? Yes. So, so we actually had a ribbon cutting yesterday uh, to officially open the office, but we've been very pleased that uh, working with our U.S. Uh, embassy counterparts, you know, to get our office up and running, but the people that are uh, being hired are, you know, currently coming on board. But also, you know, we continue to use that space and we have people that are coming here quite regularly on CDYs from uh, temporary, you know, coming here temporary from Barbados, our office in Guyana. And so we're very happy about that. There's going to be a reception tonight as well in honor of the opening. So I hope that you'll be there. Once I get my invitation, Mr. White, <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> so hint, hint. <laughs> it is on its way. Um, yes. But no, but we're very pleased about that because there's a number of things that we're hoping to continue to do and to achieve in launching of new programs and activities here, as I mentioned earlier, about trafficking of persons. We're going to be uh, doing an MOU signing with the uh, Trinidad and Tobago uh, Chamber of Industry and Commerce here as well. But, you know, this is just the beginning as we continue to build more programs and activities. And as the Charge uh, mentioned, I mean, this is, uh, uh, you know, one tool in the toolbox that the U.S. government has at the embassy here and that we hope to be more in working in a more inclusive way with our partners here in Trinidad and Tobago as we go forward. Of course. And Mr. Moore, I know that there's the issue of uh, climate change, as you would have mentioned. Um, how is it being addressed with the U.S. Embassy now that the USAID office is here in, in TNT? So we are, we are addressing climate change, I would say, in, in three different ways. Mm -hmm. So at the broader regional level and then directly with the people in government Trinidad and Tobago. So first, let me talk about how we're dressing it at the regional level. One of the outcomes of the Knife Summit in the Americas, which, which happened in June in Los Angeles, was the announcement of the U.S.-Caribbean partnership to address the climate crisis, or PAC 2030. So the goal of PAC 2030 is to work with our Caribbean partners, government, civil society, and private sector, to focus on four pillars or four key areas. The first is to increase the access to development financing, which is important, and this was a, a key topic that Caribbean leaders raised with President Biden and Vice President Harris. The second area or pillar is the development of clean energy projects, because that's also important. The third area or pillar would be develop, developing local capacity. 
And then the fourth area is just to strengthen our collaboration overall with the Caribbean. So that's the, so that's the broader context. And again, that's under PAC 2030. And, and I, I, I should state that you know, the development of PAC 2030 or the announcement of PAC 2030 you know, was the direct result of the engagement of the Caribbean leaders with our leadership, President Biden and Vice President Harris. Now, at a local level, we're also going to implement projects that directly benefit the people in Government Trinidad and Tobago. One project that I'd like to highlight is in July in Tobago, we donated 12 electronic bikes or e-bikes to Tobago's tourism, yeah, yes, yeah. Tur yeah, tourism oriented, yes. oriented police. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, we also do donated a, a solar energy electric power charging station. And it, in addition, our partners from the Trinidad, the, the U.S., sorry, from the American Chamber of Commerce of Trinidad and Tobago also donated uh, another solar power, electricity power charging station. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those e-bikes accomplished three goals of ours, our, our strategic goals with Trinidad and Tobago, help to address the climate crisis, they help to address citizen security, and they're also trying to promote, you know, sustainable, long-term, inclusive, economic growth because again it's trying to help develop the tourism i'll say develop not to say develop but strengthen yeah. the tourism sector, the tourism sector so yes that and then the, the final way that we're trying to work directly with our Trimbagonian colleagues to address the climate crisis is last week we held a reception where we brought together key stakeholders from the government of Trinidad and Tobago the private sector and civil society to exchange ideas and information as well as best practices about what we can do in Trinidad and Tobago and the region to to address the climate crisis. Of course, and Mr. Moore, you ended at a perfect time. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming in and sharing exactly what the USAID satellite office is hoping to achieve here in TNT as it is set up at the US Embassy in Port of Spain. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you we so much. We may have so you much. again another time soon. Absolutely. <laughs> and that was uh, Mr. White and, of course, the Chargé d'Affaires, Mr. Shanti Moore, just talking about the USAID, their new satellite office that as is at the US Embassy in Port of Spain. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Stay with us.